I want to tell you about something horrible that happened in 1955. It happened here in Algeria, which had for years been a French colony and home to thousands of Europeans who enjoyed life on the Mediterranean. But that changed in 1954. Algerian Muslims took to the hills under the banner of a new organization, the FLN. The FLN wanted France out of Algeria, but their revolt had struggled against the advanced French military, while many Algerians wanted to resolve the conflict through compromise. But all that changed on the 20th of August, 1955. On that day, the FLN launched a number of horrific raids against people of European descent, raping, mutilating, and beheading victims. Those killed were mainly women and children, with the youngest victim being a baby only five days old, murdered in the most hideous way. I could go on with more details about this attack, but honestly, you don't need to hear it. You just need to know it was bad. The leading strategist of the FLN was Ramdan Abain. He knew there was little chance of beating France's modern army using conventional military tactics. Instead, he said, we will oblige France to meet us on a different battlefield, the political one, where it can never win. The way to victory, Abain argued, was to provoke France into brutal repression, which would destroy support for her in Algeria and around the world. For this reason, murdering civilians was better than killing soldiers. As Abain put it in a phrase that would become famous, one corpse in a jacket is always worth more than 20 in uniform. Abain didn't have to wait long for his prediction of a brutal response to prove correct. In the days and weeks that followed, huge numbers of Algerian men were shot without trial. Villages suspected to be harbouring FLN members were raised by the French Air Force. In one of the cities where there had been attacks, dozens of local men were rounded up, taken to the city's stadium and executed. The FLN later claimed almost 12,000 local Arabs had been killed in the French reaction to the massacres. And it didn't stop there. In the years that followed, the French destroyed over 8,000 villages, relocated over 2 million Algerians to concentration camps and used execution, torture and rape to try and defeat the FLN. But it didn't work. The Muslims of the Kasbah, until then outwardly docile, unfurled their colors. Their colors were red, white, and green. The colors of the National Liberation Front, the FLN. As well as turning Algerians towards the FLN, the brutality of French methods lost her support abroad, led to division at home, and by 1962, Algeria had been granted independence. It's not unusual to see terrorist attacks described as mindless, senseless, or mad. But in fact, there's a strategy to terrorism, and there are numerous terrorist manuals, handbooks, and manifestos where terrorists explain just how it's meant to work. As I'm recording this, Hamas has just launched an incredibly gruesome attack on Israel, involving the slaughter of hundreds of civilians, including children, and the taking of dozens of hostages. Also, as I record, Israel has launched airstrikes on the Gaza Strip, cut off electricity and water, and is massing forces for a ground invasion. But in this video, I'm going to pull back from the current crisis and look at the strategy behind terrorism. How terrorists, despite being much weaker than the states they oppose, set a trap that states repeatedly fall into. Unless Israel, and all of us, can understand this trap and how to avoid it, there will be many more such terrorist attacks to come. Prime Minister Netanyahu says that Israel will, quote, take mighty vengeance for this black day. We will turn it into an island of ruins. I don't know how Israel will get out of this at the end. Are they going to occupy Gaza? Are they going to rebuild Gaza? Who's going to govern Gaza? These are major questions. France's reaction wasn't just wrong, hurting civilians rather than those who'd carried out the massacres, but it worked against their own interests. It alienated the civilian population and strengthened their opponents, weakened the position of moderate Algerians who were their potential allies, lost support for its rule in France and internationally, was a huge and unsustainable commitment of soldiers, weapons and money, and it undermined France's own legitimacy, the ideas and principles that are ultimately a society's vitality and identity. We might call this the terrorism trap, a vengeful reaction to terrorism that is gratifying in the short term, but ultimately self-defeating. As terrorism expert and former MI5 officer Tom Parker explains, revolutionaries and terrorists have long understood how provoking a brutal reaction can help them. 
As long ago as 1851, Proudhon published an influential manifesto that said it simply, reaction causes revolution. Mao Zedong, who used guerrilla warfare to defeat government forces in China, used the analogy of a flea, small and inconsequential, but through its irritating bites causes a dog to overreact, scratching and scratching until the wound is dangerously infected. The most famous group who understood the terrorism trap was Al-Qaeda. Anything more than that, we don't know if it was a commercial aircraft, we don't know if it was a private aircraft, we have no idea how many... Despite the pain and awful loss of life, on their own, the attacks of September the 11th couldn't seriously threaten America. But Al-Qaeda knew their actions would pressure the US into a response. And the people who knocked these buildings down will hear all of us soon. So I have to work the sort of the, the dark side, if you will. We're going to spend time in the shadows, and what's going to be vital for us to, uh, to use any means at our disposal. Billions of dollars spent, hundreds of soldiers' lives lost, many more radicalized Muslims, both at home and abroad. Saddam toppled, but Iraq crippled by violence. Osama bin Laden dead, but Islamist terrorism still flourishing, and a humiliating exit from Afghanistan. The response left American credibility diminished. The noble idea of liberal intervention discredited, led to division at home and the loss of international support. And all of this was intentional. One reason we know this is the writing of Al-Qaeda insider Abu Nakir Naji, who in his work describes September the 11th as a trap. As a consequence, he wrote, America will seek revenge and the conflict will intensify. Well, he wasn't wrong. OK, well, if that's the terrorism trap, what's the alternative? In 2011, right-wing extremist Andreas Breivik detonated a huge bomb outside government buildings in Oslo, leaving eight people dead and nine seriously injured. Then, after the blast, things got worse. Reports say a man dressed as a police officer opened fire shortly after the blast in the capital and that a number of people were injured. Breivik made his way to the island of Atoya, where he attacked a Labour Party youth camp. In the hours that followed, he killed 69 people, most of whom were young, and left 33 injured. It was the deadliest incident in Norway since the Second World War. But the response to Breivik wasn't vengeful or hasty. Even though Breivik had told the authorities more bombs were scheduled to explode, the police didn't use torture to try and get him to reveal information. Nor were there any crackdowns or moves to overturn civil liberties. Instead, the country grieved, put Breivik on trial for murder, and sent him to prison, where he is now ignored. You must have felt anger and rage at that moment. I was angry, uh, uh, but most of all, I felt uh, sorrow uh, 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 for what has happened. Uh, uh, but I still believe that our answer was the right one. He wanted to attack our free, open, democratic societies. So the best response is more openness, more democracy, because then we prove that he is not winning, we are winning. By the time you watch this, you'll know more than I do about how Israel has responded to Hamas's attack of the 7th of October. But from their early actions, it doesn't look like they will avoid the terrorism trap. But a response that treats the people in Gaza as animals won't just be wrong, but will be, as I've tried to show in this video, against Israel's own interests. The risk for Israel is that they rush into a military response that is unsustainable, happening at a time and place of their enemies choosing, with no plan for what follows. A response that turns Palestinians further towards Hamas, weakens their potential allies, poisons their own national unity, and squanders international support. If I were Israeli, right now I'd be feeling angry and shocked, but the question I'd want my leaders to answer is this, what do my worst enemies want me to do, and how can I do just the opposite? Hi, my name's Brendan and I make videos about the ideas that explain the news. If you found that video interesting, the next video you should watch is this one, all about the psychology behind political beliefs and how you can use that insight to help persuade people to change their minds.